Hey everyone, welcome to the webinar, Why Online Brands Are Consolidating Their Marketing Tech Stack. My name is Mikkel, I'm the VP of Growth at Shaker, and with me today I have Kat, Customer Growth Specialist at Clavio. So thank you so much for joining, Kat. How's it going? Yeah, good, good, very good. Happy to be here. Perfect. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. Really excited to get started. Uh, so let's jump jump in. Uh, but before I hand over to Kat, Kat, I just wanted to give a brief introduction to Shaker. Uh, so essentially, Shaker is the, the creative hub for ROI-driven marketing teams, where we help brands boost their campaign performance with better, faster, and more cost-efficient creatives at scale. Uh, and just like Clavio helps you consolidate email, SMS, and push notifications in one single marketing automation platform, we help you consolidate all your creative needs for social media advertising in one central hub, where we offer creative services optimized for performance uh, and we turn those custom creatives into templates so you can produce fresh creative iterations on the fly and our creative automation solutions en enable you to scale creative automation, uh, creative production beyond human limitations. And right now our flagship solution and focus is creative optimization for product level videos in catalog ads. So if you're familiar, Meta's catalog ads, also known as dynamic product ads, is one of the most effective ad formats ever developed. And up, to, up until now, it has been a static image format only. Uh, but Meta has been working on supporting videos and catalog ads for quite some time. And now, uh, in October, it will soon reach general availability, uh, which is a pretty big deal for advertisers across the globe. Uh, and uh, we... Uh, like the, the reason POV is coming now is that people spend more and more time on video first surfaces like Instagram Reels uh, and advertisers need to adapt to the new reality and meet their audiences in places and ways that they are expected to be. So if you want your catalog ads to be delivered on Reels placements, you, you need POV. Uh, and we see that advertisers who unlock POV see a massive jump in Reels delivery. Uh, with, with an increase of catalog ads delivery on Reels from 0.1% to 29% of impressions of their catalog ads. And this the best way to get started with PLV uh, is by working with Shaker. And this is essentially how it works. Uh, we will take your product feed uh, your, and pair that with a bespoke template created by Shaker or your internal design team. And then we run that through the Shaker creative automation engine. And then we append videos to every single SKU in your product catalog. Uh, and now that you have an enriched feed, uh, enrichment feed, you, you simply upload that to your product catalog as a supplementary feed in your commerce manager, Meta Commerce Manager. And once you've done that, you essentially have a PLV catalog ready to run PLV ads. Uh, and you can leverage that when you create catalog ads in your Meta Ads Manager. Uh, so if you're interested in trying this out with Shaker, please feel free to reach out to, uh, to me uh, and I can uh, give, you, give you a short uh, introduction to the, to the solution. So that was a pretty quick Shaker intro. Now over to Kat, who will share why online brands are consolidating their marketing tech stack with Clavio. Are you ready? Let's do it. Um, I must say I'm a massive sucker for those sort of uh, short videos. At the moment, I've been looking at making ramen recipes. And I know like lots of brands, different ramen packaging, and I'm like in the weeds of that. So yeah, really awesome That's stuff. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much for joining everyone. Um, so I'm going to be talking today about how and why APAC brands are consolidating email and SMS strategies in a single platform like Clavio. But a bit about me. I'm Kat from Clavio. Um, it's got a good sort of ring to it, I reckon. Um, and I work in the customer growth team based in sunny Sydney. Uh, Clavio has been rapidly evolving their solution offerings. And I speak to merchants and customers every single day and talking to them about ways that they can get the most out of their Clavio platform. And we're constantly rolling new things out. So in the last couple of years, SMS was the new product. And we've actually recently just launched reviews and a CDP product as well. So very exciting stuff. Uh, if you want to contact me, my uh, email address is um, on the side there. So cat.ramos at clavio.com. Otherwise, um, feel free to connect in. And today, a bit of uh, an objective, I'll be taking you guys through the benefits of consolidating your customer data and marketing strategies all in one place. And then secondly, take you go guys through some real world strategies of how to really take your marketing to that next level, especially with Black Friday, Cyber Monday around the corner, you will get some really great tips of what to do to maximize the revenue dr you're driving there. So a bit of an agenda, I'll take you through what is Clevio. Uh, talk about why brands are wanting to simplify their tech stack. 
some of the downsides of using multiple platforms. And then the fun part, I'll take you through Clevio in action and what that could mean for you. So firstly, what's Cle what is Clevio? So essentially, we help brands grow through more intelligent marketing. So this really gives you full ownership over your own customer data. And so you can access all of it in one platform. Then what you do with that data to create really awesome experiences without sacrificing the consistency of your brand. And as a result, you can build really personal relationships with the customers and really build that rapport, get to know them and understand the best ways to communicate them and really make them your champions. And that ultimately leads to, you know, more revenue, but also you can own your growth and really take it to the next level. And if there's a tool that you absolutely love, you can easily integrate them into Clevio um, so you can maximize your engagement with your customers. So whether that's loyalty points, for instance, or any support tickets, shipping information, quiz results, um, they're pretty endless. Um, and all this data you can use to actually build segmentation and really personalize experiences all through Clevio. So most of these integrations take only a matter of minutes to set up. It's a super simple plug and play. And for me, I'm not a super technical person at all. So this is an absolute dream for me. So just a few simple clicks and you're ready to get started. But what does that like really mean in um, a real form of example? So I'll take you through a little bit of a journey. So uh, with Clevio, you can use your data to, you know, people were, were shopping on your website, but maybe they didn't purchase. Let's plug that into your social ads and retarget them to get them back onto your website. Or maybe it's sending an email to your VIP champion customers. We can see they've been browsing a high value item, but hey, price has dropped. Let's let them know through an email and SMS. Or maybe you have a new product launch email and you want to send it first to people who have left you a four or five star review. And all of this is really possible through connecting all these different touch points within Clevio and getting that full picture of who they are and how to best communicate with them. So why are brands wanting to simplify their tech stack? There's a lot of main um, reasons and benefits, uh, but the, the main sort of two ones are is to really accelerate your growth through marketing strategies and also improve workflow efficiencies. We want to be doing more with less, really, at the end of the day. And some of the different ways to do that is you, you'll actually reduce your platform costs so you don't have to pay or use multiple platforms to house all your customer information. With Clavio, it's all in one place. And then that just means that your employees and workers can actually become experts and just learn one platform instead of having to spread themselves thin, the spread themselves thin and learn multiple. And that means that you can start to really optimize the customer journeys and have automations in place between different channels and do things like segmentation and lists um, and you know based uh, based channels on people's preferred channel of choice and have that sort of humming in the background. And what that does, it means that you can actually focus on things that are truly valuable to your business. So how do we increase our revenue? How can we improve our customer lifetime value? And really focus in on those key strategies when your technology is humming and working seamlessly in the background. And some of the reasons, I guess, why email and SMS, it makes sense to having them together. It really gives marketing teams an easy way to test the effectiveness of each channel side by side. So an example might be, hey, what happens if I were to abandon my car? When would I receive an email versus an SMS? And as much as that sounds super simple, it, coordinating the timing of those two sequences between two different platforms is actually incredibly difficult. Um, and you want to make sure they're timed out appropriately and it makes sense from an end user perspective. So if you've got questions like that, this is a really simple way to solve um, right away. And the other thing is that customers really benefit from is obviously attribution. We want to know the an accurate source of truth based on last touch. So you may be sending a few different messages to the same customer across you know multiple channels, and you want to know was it the email or maybe was it the SMS that led to that customer to finally make that purchase. So we have separate attribution for each channel for SMS and email, and you can customize these as well. But the default is for SMS, 24 hours last clicked, or an email is clicked or open and attribution is about five days. But the thing is, is where we stand out is that we actually won't overlap the attribution. It will be one channel equals one sale, and this will help eliminate any of that conflicting data. Because what can happen often if you're using different platforms um, to attribute revenue, there's a lot of confusion as to figure out which of the two channels actually attributed the sale when the, their windows are you know, not aligned and in sync with each other. 
So next, I'll take you through some of the downsides of having multiple uh, solutions. So I guess, what is a marketing point solution? Uh, so it's typically a tool or an app used to address one single pain point within your marketing strategy. So some of the problems you may um, come across is like, hey, I just want to be able to send a simple SMS or maybe just wanting to acquire more subscribers. And, you know, the person will pitch to you as in, you know, you've already got this. It's easy to plug into your existing tech stack. But by adding more and more tools, we actually start to complicate and convolute the marketing tech stack rather quickly. And when you start adding too many tools at once, it can start to feel a bit out of control and you, you're you not really sure what's going on and things are just patched together a bit weird. And that just means a couple of things that, you know, the meaning, the format of the data might not be consistent from platform to platform. And also that timing of the data syncing between tools can differ wildly. And this results in then data being siloed in different platforms. And you don't really have that full picture of what's happening because there's a lot going on in the tech stack. But I'll take you through some examples of what that actually means. So meet Jessica. Uh, so she's received a product, but you know, doesn't quite fit. We've all experienced that, I'm sure. Uh, and she's been chatting to a customer support person. So whilst this is all happening, she receives an SMS asking for her to leave a positive review for that exact product. Probably not a good experience for her since she's trying to make an exchange or return it. But because that SMS platform didn't have the right data to say, hey, actually, let's solve this customer support ticket first before we send out a review request, this has obviously led to a poor experience for Jessica. Now, in the middle, we've got Stephen. So he has a separate SMS and email platform, which is causing him some technical difficulties. So he's just realized that cookied profile data, that means when someone clicks on an SMS, the ability to do website tracking, so see what items they're viewing, adding to their cart, et cetera, none of that rich customer data is actually being passed from his SMS provider to his email platform like Clavio. And this is causing him issues since it means his flows like an abandoned cart flow or browse abandoned flow have just stopped working. And these were once really high revenue generating flows for him. So this is obviously a big issue for him. And finally, we have Sarah. So Sarah is using three different tools that are all attributing revenue. She's got a list growth tool, an SMS tool, and an email tool like Clavio. And she's, you know, tallying up all the different revenue from each of the platform, but realizes that the total revenues that she's counting for is actually more than what the business actually generated. So somewhere she's double counted and then is really unsure on the best way to communicate to her customers, especially leading into a Black Friday, Cyber Monday. All right, you're probably thinking, yes, I don't like that cat. Show me how it works. And I'm just going to take you through the next section and show you in action. Okay, first, it's all about growing an SMS list. So there's a couple different ways to organically grow your SMS list. And the first one is collecting mobile numbers through a multi-step sign-up form on your website. So I recommend first step is to collect an email address like this box here. And then the second step would be to collect the mobile number. Um, and the second option. And the reason why I recommend splitting it out is because we we definitely want to capture an email address at least. And sometimes, you know, some people see that mobile option number and they kind of exit quickly, whereas at least we want to capture um, email as a, as a minimum. The second is to add SMS at consent at checkout. And it's super easy. We've got a direct integration with all major e-commerce platforms to get that up and running. Uh, and already, if you have a great email subscribers list, let's use them um, and incentivize them to join your SMS program. So a couple of ways to do that is when an email subscriber comes back to your website, because we know that they already have an email, um, they're part of your list, let's just send them a targeted pop-up just to collect the SMS. Or potentially let's design a campaign to all email subscribers and incentivizing them to sign up for VIP exclusive access to sale. And you can use a variety of different touch points aside from your e-commerce store to drive um, and grow your list. So the most common ways for the APAC region is to use lookalike audience modeling through Facebook or Google ads, or even, you know, if you've got a really good social media following, let's do a story on Instagram and um, incentivize people to opt in. So next I'll take you through sending multi-channel campaigns through one platform and a couple of examples. So when you're looking, I guess, holistically at um, the different channels at play, they should be treated separately. So emails are really, really great for longer, more general announcement and more frequent communication. Like we can send a few more um, 
in that a week's time. Whereas SMS is almost guaranteed to be seen. So we've got to make sure it's super punchy. I'm not sure about you guys, but I'm a type of person that if I get a text message, I have to have that at zero. Like I don't like having lots of unread SMSs. And I'm, I think a lot of people are the same, whereas your email ones can definitely skyrocket a bit. So we've got to make sure that, you know, if, since we are being a little bit like um, intrusive, we want to make sure that we're that, that using SMS for time sensitive things or special messages that really build deeper customer relationships or provide like immediate value. Um, and common use cases for push notifications are app exclusive promotions, reminders to take action or, you know, app only perks. And as I said, because push and SMS are both quite similar, they're a really personal way to reach someone. We want to make sure that, you know, buzz, buzz, phone goes off. It's got a really great time sensitive content that warrants interrupting their day. So I'll take you through a couple of ways to use these channels for different announcements that you may have. So the first one is when you are uh, leading a sale with SMS. So you can use this strategy to help, you know, build excitement and anticipation for either a promotion, a sale, a product drop, et cetera. So this, perf this strategy is perfect if you're wanting to start um, a sale strong and grow your SMS list at the same time. So firstly, um, start by promoting the upcoming event in sign up form and offer exclusive early access or additional incentives when a visitor opts in for SMS. So recommending you do that about two to four weeks prior to sale. 24 hours before the sale, let's deliver on the promise and let's send a text message um, before it begins. So giving early access to those who opted into SMS. Then yay, sales on, let's let's go go hard. And you announce the sale to the rest of your audience by sending an email and a push notification. And then the added benefit of doing this all in the same platform is that you can actually easily exclude anyone who has already shopped the sale to avoid over messaging. Um, next, we'll look to how to launch a new product using a cross channel strategy as well. So here we wanna really think about being as efficient as possible and use segmentation to exclude people who've already purchased. So firstly, let's send an email to your subscribers, inviting them to subscribe for SMS for VIP launch access. Then right before the product drops, send them a text saying, giving them exclusive early access to shop the drop. And then on the day of the launch, yes, we're live. We're sending an email and push notification announcing the drop to all other subscribers. And then if appropriate if um, to your launch strategy, you can follow up 48 hours after the launch with a text to your engaged SMS subscribers who haven't yet purchased. See if we can drum up a bit more there. And finally, don't forget to follow up a few weeks after your launch with customers who have purchased a product for a review for that product. And remember to set a time delay um, after the order was delivered and exclude anyone that may have an open ticket with customer support. So really the key to a successful omni-channel strategy is having a single place where you can actually have a bird's eye view into the messaging your campaign, your audience will receive each month. So a campaign calendar like this will help you see what's coming up, whether any gaps and allow you to easily create new campaigns when needed. And the next part are our automated texts, which are also known as flows. And for automations, the same series that perform well for email tend to also do extremely well for SMS. So the only difference is that in some cases, we we'll want to use SMS just to vary um, the communication between channels, keeping things, you know, a bit fresh without overwhelming the email inbox. We don't want to send too many abandoned cart reminders just in there. So SMS is a really great way to for those time sensitive flows or times we just really want to grab their attention and help with that conversion. And some of the hero flows I recommend would be a dedicated SMS welcome series or an abandoned cart flow or a browse abandonment flow. So I'll take you through an example of a abandoned cart flow. Um, so once a customer has started a checkout, let's wait one hour, then send a push notification uh, then we'll wait another four hours. And then I've added a conditional split to send an SMS if they are consented to receive one, or if not, let's take them down that email path. Because you don't really want to fatigue anybody in a single channel by filling up their inbox or texting them too often. So we can really be clever and set logic here to make sure that we're not, they're not receiving too message, too many messages, especially and sending um, using our smart sending capability as well. And we also recommend to use any dynamic content to personalize the experience. 
And finally, you can also start to use your data to really understand customers' preferred channel at the end of the day. Have they engaged with email in the last 30 days? Or maybe SMS is the channel that, you know, they're clicking more often. So this is an example of a win back flow and really, really useful for incentivizing people who've purchased only once to come back again. Uh, and you can see in this one, the trigger is based on placed order. You know, it's been 75 days. We want to get them back. But if they, you can, we can see that they haven't opened or clicked an email in the last 30 days. Let's send them a really enticing SMS message to deliver a cut through message with, you know, a special offer to help drive that sale. And with all of our um, campaigns and flows, I definitely encourage you to A-B test everything play around with the messaging, play around with the channels and the timing. Um, that's just really the best way to find what will work for your audience over time. So don't be afraid to give things a go. All right, and wrapping up here, um, we have some exciting news. We actually recently launched reviews as well. Um, so if you're a Shopify customer, you can do all of those awesome review um emails and things like that, all within Klaviyo. So with our reviews, it comes with a lot of awesome pre-built flows. So you don't need to start from scratch with that. We Some of the main differences is that we actually use real shipment data as well, instead of just fulfilled order to help eliminate any of the risk there. Um, and, you know, reviews comes with a ton of customer profile data. And what's really cool is that we can actually start to use, you know, information about what they've given us about themselves to provide them with product recommendations based on the review that they left and seeing if there's any awesome cross-sell opportunities um, in one platform, all done within Klaviyo. So if you're a Shopify uh, customer, um, really awesome there. And then the final thing, we actually also just launched our CDP two weeks ago, super fresh. Um, and it's, yeah, so it's a vertically integrated customer platform. And really the goal of our CDP was how do we make a CDP that's really designed for marketers and turnkey their account so they can just, you know, get the most out of the data that's already in there and make it really accessible for you to analyze and activate and create really awesome experiences for your customers at scale. So that's um, a couple of new products that we've launched as well. So if you're wanting to learn more, we've got lots of options for you. Um, we have a free on-demand course available called Klaviyo Academy. And there's just really cool bite-sized videos to get you up and running to help with the SMSs or your emails or your flows. A lot of different content there available. Um, if you're interested in SMS, you can enable that into your account. Um, or if it's reviews that you're wanting to explore a little bit more, you can Shopify, you can download the Shopify app to get access to it. Or maybe that CDP piece is something you're interested in. Um, you can request a demo from our website. But any of those above, you can also chat to me uh, as well. And yeah, that's all from me. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you so much for joining. Really excited that I hope you got some good insights and good takeaways from that. But yeah, that's me. <laughs> Perfect. Thank, thank you, Kat. That, that was very educational. I, I think no matter what, like if you are never done email or SMS before, you would learn something. If you have some experience already, you would learn more. Uh, and if you're really a, a pro, I guess th they would be excited to to look at the reviews and the CDP. I think the CDP definitely takes everything to the next level. Uh, so so I, I would definitely jump on and learn more about the, the CDP. So that's, uh, yeah, thank you. Very, very insightful and uh, action-oriented. Like the, there's um, the definitely actionable, actionable steps you can take after this call. Uh, so thanks a lot for for joining. Uh, no and problem. Uh, yeah, so reach out to Kat if you uh, if you have more questions after the call. We don't have live Q and A, but yeah, uh, she provided the information for how to contact her. So perfect. Thank you, Kat, and uh, to everyone that was listening. Uh, thank you, and uh, ho hope to speak to you soon. Awesome. Thanks. Bye. Bye.